Good doubles. Jade all back to ask more goddamn questions. And top as always, fucking goddamn Tommy Becker paid question. Sends them in weekly. But uh, where in the hell are those goddamn uh, Chrissy and Digi books we were promised? <laughs> Jesus fuck, man. Um, I mean, they're coming, they're coming. Uh, I'd have to look at the goddamn, like, I don't, I don't know if we're not taking pre orders yet, so it can't be that soon, but I know it's soon. Uh, they were on the early release schedule. I don't know. That's not easy to submit them, and it's, he's not all exactly on time. Let's just fucking say that. Um, I, can't, I don't know if they're submitted to press yet or not. Good news is, even if they weren't, CDs aren't as long as vinyl. And the good, good news about all that, too, even vinyl is nowhere near that stupid ass fucking wimp vid uh, time frames. Uh, where it was one year. It's now, I don't know, three months, 10 weeks, something like that. You know, standard turnaround time. So. You know, and, and like I said, CDs are quicker than that. CDs are generally four to six weeks, it seems like. Um, should be quicker, but by the time we fucking get them and shit, it seems like a four to goddamn six weeks. They're coming, goddamn it. You, 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 when you see the site, though, they'll be uh, they'll be taken for pre-orders. So, but cheers, Tommy Becker. P.S. Jamie Jost. <laughs> Jamie Jost is Olympic poser star chaser. You read this. This is an example of sarcasm. Lighten up, rah, rah. Me? Who do I need to light up? What do you mean? Dude? The whole goddamn channel sarcasm. I, I sincerely fucking hope, man, yourself and everybody watching this, you don't think that like 99.9% .9 of the shit that comes out of my mouth is goddamn serious. It's all a goddamn joke. It's all fucking fun. So it's all sarcastic as fuck. Um, in case you haven't picked up on that. Uh, Rick Galvez. I think this is an order goddamn question, but it's about a couple page fees. I want to get this goddamn page out of here. Uh, yo, I dog. Rick from Malice Divine here. House Divine back in the house. Did that goddamn review several months ago. Got a channel question for you. Who, in your opinion, is the toughest guy in metal? <laughs> uh, you know, as a kid growing up, well, first off, I guess it would de de uh, depend. How do you define tough? You know, what is what do you consider a tough guy? I can tell you this. I know for a fucking fact. In general, there's all, again, always exceptions to the rule, dumb, dumb, before you come over here and say anything. In general, from my personal experience, and from people I know that have lived more life than I have, say the exact same thing. Guys that run their mouth and talk tough are never the tough ones. It's always the guys that kind of stay quiet and don't, don't uh, stay in their own lane. And then when you step on a line, they knock you the fuck out. Uh, that's generally the way it fucking goes. Because tough guys don't need to prove they're goddamn tough. It's when the time comes, you know, and the action's needed, that's when you fucking know. But especially bitches online talking. Dude, anyone like that, that's going back and forth in comments or emails, or I'm going to kick your ass and shit, that's automatically, that I've known for years. That's just a, that's a fucking definite fucking pussy. You ain't doing shit, ever. I've never had somebody argue with me online about anything ever confront me in person and people confront me in person about other shit you know what i mean just random things that popped up or whatever never a typewriter tough guy so keep that in mind it depends on what you define as tough is it a guy that he's an mma fighter I, I i don't consider that a tough guy either that's a guy that yeah in a physical altercation where he went in a fight i would sure as fuck hope so and if it's not an mma fighter that's his goddamn profession that's like saying hey dude uh, if you go play fucking uh, football in your goddamn backyard with an NFL player, you think you can beat him? I would sure as hell hope he could beat me. You know what I mean? Can you fucking out clean shitters over that plumber? Out fix shitters at a time? I would hope the plumber could do a better. That's his profession. I would, I would hope he could do a better fucking job. That doesn't make you a fucking tough guy. So, at least not by my definition. So, it's because you're an MMA. I'm, I'm a fighter. Okay, great. I mean, that's... It's honestly kind of, unless you're using that for sport to make money, self-defense at the time comes, it's a, it's, it's, it's a useless skill in my goddamn opinion. Don't be wrong, it's cool, and it is it is the ultimate sport, but guys that want to fight and just be, for, for what, dude? Like, first of all, are you that much of a fucking asshole and jackass that you got to fucking defend yourself in a physical altercation? Or are you just a goddamn fucking jerk-ass fucking bully that just wants to beat people up for no reason? In that case... Whatever, nobody likes you. You're a fucking piece of shit. You know what I mean? So that doesn't work in your affair. And another thing, too, 
if you do get in a physical altercation, I hope you have witnesses that it was definitely self-defense. You're just going to go to jail over it anyways. So, again, unless you're doing it for a licensed sport, I don't see why everybody's obsession with it. People that are worried about fighting, I can beat you up, dude. That's literally 10-year-old kiddos that think that way. They're like, dude, my dog's bigger than your dog. My dad's stronger than your dad. That's that's what you sound like. I can beat you up. Oh, okay, 10-year-old. <laughs> Fucking like, don't give a shit. That's why I laugh when people, because me going to the gym, should, oh, I wouldn't want to fuck with that guy. Why? You, you might be able to kick my ass. I don't want to fucking fight. I, I never got into training, weight training to be a bully or to be a fucking tough guy, a strong guy. No, it's about, I mean, and it's for the uh, the bodybuilding lifestyle, the aesthetic, how it looks to look a certain way. Give a shit about fucking fighting. And if you do, that's cool. But I'm just saying, I never saw that appeal. So that's kind of my definition of toughness. Um, growing up, I always thought it was, you know, kind of looking at them. Uh, just looking rough and tough and grim. And a guy that, yeah, you wouldn't want to fuck with. Uh, the two guys were always the GB and the goddamn uh, Big Willie from uh, the Tish. Those are the two guys that seemed like you wouldn't want to, uh, they, they at least looked it. Now, are they? I don't know. Um, maybe they are, maybe they're not. Uh, it sure as hell didn't cross my mind that goddamn uh, any of those fucking pussies from fucking half these black metal bands. I, I, I always saw them. Jesus, fuck, man. Biggest goddamn pushover fucking wimps I've ever seen in my life. I'm sure there's somebody fucking tougher, though, that, that's out there uh, that they may actually be. But those were the two growing up that, in my mind, uh, at least appeared that way. Yeah, when you look at the back, especially, you know, Once Upon the Cross, Serpents of the Lights. I, I kind of, honestly, I, I, kind of all the guys, even the fucking uh, the, the Hoffman brothers and shit, just, just look like guys, yeah, I probably wouldn't want to fucking, you know, mingle with these guys. Wouldn't want to get on their bad side. It just, just comes off as that way. Again, whether it's the case or not, I don't fucking know. Just, but it came off that way, at least to me as a kid. And, you know, uh, Will, uh, plus, you I mean, you hear stories of Will. I mean, well, old Polish thing and looking at a lot of his, his, his imagery was cool. Looked like a kind of, you know, guy that don't take no guff, you know, especially on stuff like, you know, uh, Domain of Death, Chainsaw to I don't know. Just look kind of a cool image, kind of like, yeah, don't fuck with image. Again, I'm not saying that's definitely the case, but. That's how I got him, took it. Um, gotta say, the brothers from Christian, too, that, that that represents some goddamn toughness. I definitely don't picture pink thongs on those guys. So uh, they, they seem to have some sack and some oomph. Got that, always got that vibe, too, especially looking at, like, goddamn uh, picture on uh, Cockers Armageddon, shit like that. I'll tell you those. Also, you gotta check out at Sue's self title album from 2009, if you haven't already. Is that the one with the goddamn bluish goddamn pyramid cover? Uh, didn't look interesting to me, but maybe. It's killer fucking black, black and thrash, bra bra. You mentioned Absu in today's video, which I is why I bring it up. Thank you for the quick question of Miles Divine in today's video as well. Glad to hear it was one of your favorite things you reviewed on your channel. Um Yeah, maybe I'll check it out. I mean, uh, maybe. Uh it's just the band Absu in general, just I didn't have a whole ton of interest around. Like I said, Barrett from Vitrol is uh cool, just a lot of BS on there. Um, it's like, okay, just get to the Timskis. And then, uh, I like, like I said, that demo release, what is it? The, um, demo rehearsals, whatever that double disc is, is what I got. It's definitely my, way more death metal. Um, outside that, I, I don't even think I've listened to anything else outside that. This is one of those bands, I don't know. It, it just, I, I, I mean, I'm different too. It just didn't look super interesting. I mean, the covers, everything. It just wasn't, wasn't drawing the dog in, but yeah, maybe it's great. Uh, Joe Gutman, paid question. What's up, J-Dog? In recent years, the U.S. seems to have stepped up its games for festivals. Yeah, I've gotten that vibe, too. Psycho Las Vegas got Emperor and both Hell's Heroes and Death Fest got Sodom. Based on lineups, past and present consistency, and your personal experience vending a handful of them, what would you say is the best one? P.S. I thought of one more band whose later stuff is better than the early stuff, Vital Remains. Uh, yeah, Vital Remains, I, I would happen to agree with that, yeah. Because to, to me, Forever Underground and The Christianized are my favorite Vital Remains. The first two are kind of... <laughs> yeah, it's the true shit. It's death metal. It's a good background, but kind of boring. Kind of nothing there. Kind of kind of goddamn one ear out the other. Remember uh, Dawn of the Apocalypse being uh, fucking absolutely nothing there, too. 
been with that for 15 years since I listened to it, though, so maybe I go back and knock my socks off. Maybe. Doubt it, though. Um, best fest that I've been to? Um, I mean, again, depends on what you define as best, too. My favorite as far as lineups it's looking like and personal interaction and best time I had and enjoyed, I would have to say Metal Threats. Uh, I like the venue. I like the club, too. But best as far as quantity of bands, size, as far as attendance, uh, I still have to say it's Maryland Death Fest. Um, Maryland Death Fest, it's great if it doesn't rain that goddamn weekend. So the cons are it's outside. It's great if it's nice. If it rains, and it did one year, Hells was there. Dog was fucking pissed off. Sucks fucking a uh, massive fucking fat dick then. Um, there's always a lot of fucking bands I don't care about. I, I'm not going to that. Literally every single festival I've ever gone to, there's a bunch of bands I don't care about. You can't expect to have 50 bands when you're a super fan of all of them. But uh, it just seems like Metal Threat gets a lot of the bands I do like. You know what? The thing is, I guess as far as that, yeah, another thing with Metal Threat, it seems like even the bands I don't personally care about, it's all respectable stuff. I guess... Uh, yeah, Maryland has some canoe stuff every now and then. Most of the Maryland stuff is respectable, too. But the uh, the thing is with Maryland is the non-respectable, it's not, that it's not respectable, is there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, ooh, or I look at the logo, never heard of it. Like, what does that say? Generally speaking, Metal Threat, it's all stuff I, I'm at least aware of, and it's at least respectable. But am I a super fan of every single band? No, of course not. Um but it seems like it's the biggest amount that I am a fan of. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think, though, how much non-respectable crap does Maryland have that I know? Um, not too much that I can think of. I remember the year, remember Downplayed. I guess it depends on the ass. I mean, do I respect them? Not looking to burn the guy's house down or nothing, but I, I, I just, to me, that's, that's just canoe rock right there. Um, It's not real metal, my goddamn book. By definition, is it metal? Sure, but I'm just saying. When I hear crap like that, it's like, oh god. Um, that's how that. I think pretty much been good. And then, uh, Hell's Heroes. Uh, that setup was really good too. Really professional. But a lot of the bands that do play that, it's all the true like old school stuff. But it, there's definitely, uh, I guess, it depends on the year. Look at well, most years I didn't pay attention to, but going by this year, majority of the bands I personally didn't care about. Um. And the bands that I did care about, exception, like I said, I, I went there for Attic, but like, it's kind of unfortunate because like, it's in that time frame. And that's why I was saying, guys, you know, it's, you don't want to take advantage of your time frame for when you see shit is it's very, very obvious when bands are playing. It's like, we got so-and-so. It's like, you got so-and-so with one original member and a bunch of fucking uh, fill-in guys it's just not that interesting to me. You know what I mean? Again, it's cool to have out, you're hearing the songs, but it's not, I don't know. It's just not that fucking interesting. To be honest, the bands that, yeah, that, that I look forward to seeing now is, which is not like what I want to see, really, really want to see that I have it. It's got to be bands that, uh, some newer ones, like, you know, me as Mac Necros is really good. Cause that's gonna be, you know, it's a newer band, original attic. Uh, pharmacists, if they did a damn show, um, the ones that I've never seen, like Denial of God, of course, uh, I do want to see Sabat and Metal Lucifer. I mean, cause that too, I mean, when I think both those bands to me, it's Gezel. He's the, he's the nuts and bolts. He's the fucking sack. He's the goddamn, the, the, the chief, the fucking, he's the guy, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, if he did have some filling guys, I'm like, what are the guys was there anyways? I mean, you don't know so-and-so. I didn't know his name. I didn't, but I mean. Whatever. I'm, I, when I think of those bands, I think of him. So as long as he's in there, to me, that's... And I've never seen him either, so it's still it's still worth seeing. Um, but it, yeah, even bands I like, like, I brought it up, Monstrosity, Sinister, stuff like that. Well, of course, I'm, I'll, I, if they're in the... I'm not going out of my way to see them, but if they're playing, yeah, I'll watch them and, and all right, I enjoy most of the songs as long as it's, you know, well, Monstrosity, I pretty recognize most everything. 
Sinister's first five albums. After that, I don't recognize anything. But it, it's dude, it's like it's one guy. It, it's literally or monstrosity. It's one guy and the drummer. So it's kind of like you're not gonna be able to tell the damn difference. And the, the only the, and the bad the only bad thing about monstrosity, to be honest with you, and like Rise to Power and uh, the later albums, especially I would say Rise to Power. Um, good albums, good songs. The worst part on it though is the triggers, dude. It's like well, these triggers sound like shit. Um, so the only original member, he brings the worst goddamn part to the thing, not that his drumming's bad, but he brings the worst part to the fucking albums. And it's, it's called like it is. If you change drummers, unless it's like dying feeders or something, changing from Kevin Talley to whatever that got that out of gas guy they got later on, which I still like those albums, but everybody else is a uh, just a uh, a fraction of what Tally was. You can tell them when when Stop It Nothing came out, that was the biggest thing. I'm like, first thing I picked up was that there it was the uh, Vengeance Vengeance Unleashed track. It was a uh, split with Deep Red. That was the advanced song. Dog Dog owned it, of course, this day. I think it's a really good song, especially love the guy named Tar on that song. First thing I thought was, huh, does this need to be played on 45 RPM? Drummer sounds out of gas. Ah, that's him. Huh. Tunes are good. Riffs are good. It's catchy. You're banging the head. You're like, man, Tally sends this drummer home on a stretcher. And ever since, it's been the same damn thing. So, how the hell are we got that goddamn conversation? <laughs> Where do we want to go with that? Um, bands, yeah. Um, yeah, most of it's going to be, if it's a fest, it's going to be mostly crap I don't care about. And then a few that I do, which uh, kind of works out anyways. Honestly, there's a fest and there's, let's say, Maryland Death Fest, whatever, there's, there's 80 bands playing. If there's 10 I like, that's perfect. That's all I need. I kind of, watching more than 10 bands, that's, I'm, 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 I'm meddled out <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, as far as just attendance into the show. I was like, I don't, I don't want to watch 80 bands. I don't have the, it, it's, it's ear fatigue is all hell. I'm tired. My back hurts. I want to go I'm, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I don't want to watch 80 freaking bands. So, especially when we're vending, I got a nice goddamn tent, nice seat. Just meet meet the devils, just hang out and talk. To me, it's more of a social event than anything. Get to watch a few bands I like, I'm good to go. So, I, you don't need to have 80 bands at the dog place. 10, that's more than enough. If there's five, I'm cool with that too. But uh, the most, yeah, was going to be this metal threat, which got uh, delayed, obviously, to next year. Postponed, canceled, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, because of uh, anti-freedom anti fucking uh, clubs. that They're anti-American, burn, burning American flags in the front lawn, apparently. Uh, not that, what do you mean, dog? Don't believe in freedom of speech. The reason they don't want to uh, uh, put out the shows because two bands can't have those bands played. Why? Anti-American, blah, blah. Anti-freedom of speech. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> Get that dick out of my mouth. What are you talking about, dude? You're anti-freedom of speech. You said these bands cannot play, hence we're not having the, the, the show. They didn't kill anybody. They're not murderers. They're not rapists. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so they don't like so and so. Here's what they don't like: and freedom of speech, freedom of expression. What America stands for? You're anti-America. You're burning American flags. Cancel you, motherfucker. That goddamn show there was. There was a good, a good amount of bands I liked. Don't remember them all on top of my head. But Disaster, God Dethroned, Sabat, Nocturnal, Master. Uh, did I say Destroy Six Six Six? Um. Uh, who, who, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, Sinister, like I said, pretty much cover band with one guy, the drummer, which his drums were unique, but now he sings. Hoping to interview that guy, but uh, I'll definitely ask about that. Um, but I'm sure he, there's a possibility. I'm not doing it. The guy talks shit about my band. Don't talk shit about your goddamn band. I recommend it many fucking times. I'm just giving an honest goddamn review. Man, these sensitive little fucking My, po my Little Pony watching princesses need to fucking tough the fuck up. Then talk shit about your goddamn band. Not saying he said that, but I'm saying there's others that kind of have. Um, that's seven right there. That I want to see. And I know there's a few others I'm completely forgetting. I not remember. It's got tons of shit going on. Man. I don't have everything completely goddamn memorized. A few others that I wanted to interview too. But yeah, other, other goddamn bands I was a fan of. So that was quite a bit. Uh, what, is, what the hell did he say? Man, I thought, okay. Let's make this goddamn last one. It's another. Logan Walmart. Big question. What up, J-Dog? Some of these goddamn sweaty bags were of removed gallbladders at my gym smell like a bag of Cheetos. What kind of fucking gym you going to, bro, bro? I was wondering if the dog ever encountered any of these socially awkward bozos who stink up the whole room. 
to be honest with you, I've encountered way more of them at, the, uh, at, at metal shows than I have at the gym. And couldn't get laid if their lives depend on it. <laughs> Describe most people on a metal show <laughs> and are delusional. Oh, there's delusional people at the gym. You've got that right. No, no doubt about that. You, you want to see the biggest beer goggling, fucking wearing motherfuckers you've ever seen in your entire life? Go to a gym. Especially young guys. There's old guys too. Like, yeah, there's guys out there in their 50s where they've been working out 30 years and shit. And they, they definitely are. <laughs> It's cool to be confident, but it's like, dude, you're okay. You do have a decent amount of muscle on you. I'm not saying that you don't even look like you lift. So I can think of a few guys in my gym. They're pretty cool guys too. In the fifties, I'm like, but dude, your body fat is way too fucking high. I was like, you need to drop at least 40 pounds to look, you know, good. When I say good, no homo, but like shirt off at the beach. People aren't just like, who's this? You look like a fat guy that lifts. They're like, yeah, you can tell you lift. You definitely do look like you lift. It's obvious, but you're a fat guy that lifts. You want to be a fat guy. Listen, you want to look jacked and stacked, ripped and shredded, brah, brah. You want to get them goddamn, that, that pussy west, wet and moist just looking at you on the goddamn beach. Creaming in their goddamn up in their bikini. But that's a lot of guys. They're delusional too. Like, they, like they're always walking around in tanks and shit. I'm like, dude, you're, you're way too fat to learn that. And then the most delusional motherfuckers, you get the kids. Think they're jet, and then well, they don't look like they look. Like, even in a, even in a tank top where they got to wear tight stringer tanks, I'm like, Dude, I would never even guess that you look that you lift even in that. Like you're you're literally like 130 pounds. Now, nothing wrong with that. You're 17, and you don't just come out of the womb jacked and stacked and fucking just, you know what I mean? You got to start somewhere. I get that, but put put some clothes on and stop walking around like you're Mr. Olympia. You look like a fucking idiot. So yeah, a lot of delusional guys got you there. Delusional thinking they're ripped, but their arms are thinner than than grapevine and have no mass. Dude, I know dudes in my gym. That walk around like they're fucking Phil Heath. And literally, I have girls in my gym that are bigger and physically stronger that are there at the same time. It's like, <laughs> it's like, here's the thing. How do you not see it? You're here at the same time as me and these chicks. There is literally three or four chicks that are clearly bigger and stronger than you are. But you're walking around like your goddamn primetime fucking Olympia winning Schwarzenegger. It makes no sense. You like you look like an idiot, dude. You're just making an ass out of yourself. Again, put that sign in your back. Kick me. That's like rampant. There's like you can find them by the dozens every time you step foot in the gym. These kiddos walking around completely delusional. They're like, "Well, dog, what about when you were a teenager? Uh, you might have done the same thing." No, I wouldn't. Have. When I started off and shits, I was the exact opposite. Jesus fuck, I look like an idiot. Like, I don't know. I I, I was almost embarrassed, ashamed. Of it. I belong here. I was more that. I was more that crowd. Stay covered up. What the hell? Can't be looking like an idiot around these jack guys. I was exact. I knew. I knew my place. Fucking yeah. You just look stupid as shit. These putrid bags of elephant shit can suck suck on a dog's ass. I just don't talk to them, man. Yeah, I mean, they're annoying. Uh, as long as they stay out of my way and don't don't hog up my equipment when I need it, then hey, they're they're a paid membership that at least keeps the goddamn place in business. Um. That's the way I see it. But yeah, when they're in the way and I got to uh, like use something and they're taking it up, it's like five and train together, what they want to call training. Because uh, it damn sure ain't my definition of training by any stretch of the definition. Um, then, then yeah, I'm annoyed. They're off to the corner, just jerking each other off, sucking each other off. That's pretty much what they may as well be doing. Um, whatever. They ain't they, my goddamn problem. You know, but they'll be gone in six months anyway. It's the way it always is. What is the dog taking these goddamn canoes? Just gave it to you. Fucking yeah, a bunch of just, just, just useless flesh for flies that'll, you know, like GB said in the goddamn recent interview. We're all gonna be dead soon, anyways, so just fucking smile. Captain's closest shirt, you know what I'm gonna do. But the goddamn's getting out the morning. Later, goddamn it. 